All right, what's going on you guys? Paul here with Paul's Performance and uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we are under the hood of a 6.0 Power Stroke. Um, so for today, I have kind of a fun one, but uh, and kind of a common problem for these 6.0s. Um, we're having some boost issues and some running issues is what um, I have now. Um, this particular customer uh, called and said that their turbo vanes were sticking so they bought a new turbo um, and they wanted to get it changed out um, I have not diagnosed the truck yet but on the way to drop this truck off um, he said he pulled over to put in directions and the truck would not start um, I drove out there to do it I got the truck to start it was running very badly um, so we ended up getting it towed here um, the truck will start on its own. Um, the batteries are pretty weak when I got there, so I'm not sure. He said he don't drive it a lot, so it may not have. It may have just been batteries as to why it wouldn't start back on him. But uh, it was definitely smoking. He said a lot of black smoke um, coming out of the exhaust. So we're gonna see what's wrong with it today. See if it actually needs a turbo, um, and if not, try to figure out what it actually needs. Um, you know, if you guys have watched my videos, you know I am not a parts changer. Um, I do not believe in that um, at all. I believe you find the issue. Um, and we'll talk about some of the uh, common things that uh, uh, we'll look for on these trucks uh, based on what we get as far as when we're diagnosing and a little bit more into the turbo um, as far as like a turbo to choose. If you need a turbo, what, what to look for, what to get, what's a good idea, what's a bad idea. Um, and so forth. So first things first, we're gonna get in here and uh, look on my computer and see what kind of codes we have And I can show you guys kind of what I'm seeing just off of uh, First input of the truck being here and getting dropped off. So let's get inside. Alrighty guys So uh, I'm inside the truck um, And I have my scanner pulled up and I just ran to see if we have any codes um, We only have two um, We have a p100 which is just your OBD readiness code um, don't even pay that no mind um, and then we have a p0299 um, not sure if you guys can see but um, basically p0299 turbocharger supercharger a underboost condition um, so that's uh, that's a pretty common code it could be lots of different things um, to cause that code from a boost leak to uh, your your turbo i mean it's it's a lot of different things that can cause here and on my uh you know i have a bosch uh, evolve scanner um when you click on it it'll actually give you some code assist from other mechanics um let me get that right up here so basically it'll give you top fixes from other mechanics that we did for this code um like i said for this one the top reported fix is the EBP sensor, which is a is a possibility. Uh, the VGT on this on the turbo being stuck, that's another possibility. The turbo itself, EGR, uh, boost system leaks, lots of different things. Um, so we'll get into that first. I'm going to crank it up and kind of show you how it's running, um, and just show you some of the first things I've seen that's kind of off um, and odd. So let's get it crunk up. She starts up. Um, like I said, the, I think the batteries in this were weak. I've charged them up a little bit, um, but I think that's was probably what was his no start. Um, I didn't see anything else. High pressure oil system looks good. Everything uh, looks fine. It started when I got there, so um, we'll worry about that if we see it. So the first thing I noticed is my boost gauge over here on the dash is actually not sitting at zero it's sitting uh, a little bit above probably um you know like in the five range as far as that um instead of sitting at zero at idle um, obviously our check engine lights on but that's a little odd as to why that would be sitting there and it should be sitting at the zero um like i said i guess we'll look into that too but as you can hear the truck is idling uh very smooth no shakes no nothing um it's running perfect, but I'm gonna give it some throttle and show you kind of guys what it's doing. So Now it's starting to shake and jump And we have some white smoke 
Um, and like I said, that, that's what we're doing when we're hitting the throttle. We're getting that very choppy throttle instead of a very smooth throttle. And we're getting smoke coming out of the exhaust. So that, that, that's the way we're looking for the way the truck's running. So we're gonna get it shut off and then we'll go under the hood and I'll show you guys kind of what I'm gonna look for first. All right, guys, so we're back under the hood. Um, we have our codes pulled. We have our PR299. Um, so we're, we're gonna be looking at boost uh, system components. Um, I, as a mechanic, the first step after doing the codes is gonna be to pull up some of the data pids on my scanner and um, see what our uh, map sensor um, boost gauge uh, is pulling. I would look at my barometric and my exhaust back pressure readings to kind of see um, if any of them are off. Um, but for those of you guys who don't have a scanner to be able to do that, um, it, it, it's, it, it's gonna be a little different because you, you can't look at that stuff. So I'm gonna kind of show you guys uh, what I would do without a scanner if all I had was a code reader um, and I'm trying to figure out um, whether or not this is a simple issue. So um, basically, I'm gonna show you guys these quick things to, that I'm gonna check um, first. So first thing I'm gonna start with is um, when I was hitting the throttle in there, I was seeing the boost gauge go up, which is telling me that um, the turbo is at least doing something. If the turbo had completely grenaded itself, it, 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 it shouldn't move the boost gauge at all. Um, so I, I'm gonna push the turbo a little bit further back. Um, if I had my scanner, which I have it, um, but um, I would try to move the, the variable vanes to see if they cycle in and out to kind of you know rule the turbo system out. Um, but like I said, if you guys don't have that, you can't do that. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of push that um, last and get all our other checks. So the first thing I want to check just these are simple stuff you can do at home. Um, this is more of the at home section for you guys and then I'll get into actually trying to figure out exactly what it is. But these are some checks you can do yourself before you send it to your mechanic or before you have your mechanic friend come over with his scan tool. So first thing you wanna check, make sure your, your map sensor is plugged in, which if it wasn't, it would have a code. Um, but look at this hose that goes between the map sensor and your intake, the top of your intake. So you wanna make sure this hose has no damage in it. Um, and you also are going to want to check the nipple that goes down into the intake and make sure it doesn't it's not full of soot because if that gets full of soot then your then your map gauge can't read anymore and it will it, it will cause issues so I'll bring you over here and i'll show you what i'm talking about so you guys uh look in here this is your map sensor here you have your map sensor connector and then you have your hose connection nipple right here in which will go down and go right into the uh, top of your intake right there and there's a nipple that goes comes out of the intake where this hose connects so for one you're going to want to inspect this hose make sure nothing's broke cracked or damaged causing a leak in your boost system and then if you don't see anything there pull this connection off and make sure that this nipple is not stopped up with soot so we're going to get that hose off and see what it looks like Alrighty guys, so not sure if I'm gonna be able to get you guys a good view of it, but um, If you look at that nipple right there, you can kind of see it has a decent amount of soot buildup um, Around it. I still see a hole up top, but that doesn't mean it's all the way through So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get me a little uh, piece of wire or, or like a pick or something that will fit um, down in there. It's probably gonna have to be a piece of wire um, like I said um, a little needle or something that way I can stick it through and make sure there's a hole all the way through Get all that soot out of there um, and make sure that's cleaned out. All right guys, so I went and got me um, This is a piece of Wire just copper wire. Um, I think this is Figured out. I think it's a 12 gauge wire um, and I've stripped all the I've stripped all the insulation off except for one end. And I made this hook um, You could use something like a drill bit or something, but the reason I don't is because if you drop it in that hole, in that nipple hole, um, it goes into your intake and you will have to lift the intake off to get it out. So um, I'm using this piece of wire with a little hook on the end. That way, if it does slip out of my hands, 
it's not going to fall all the way into the intake and I don't have to rip all this stuff off. So make sure whatever you're using has a way to not fall in there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stick this in that hole and I'm going to push it through. Oh, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and we're going to push it through and try to free up this hole. Um, it feels like it's got some soot build up in it. So um, this may it may be the issue, but we'll still go over the rest if so. We're inside the truck. We still have our check engine light. I cleared it. It has come back. Our fuel, our uh, I mean, sorry, our turbo boost gauge is still not on the zero at idle. The truck is running. Um, we still have smoke coming out of the back. Still not running right. Um, so I don't think we have the issue fixed. So we're gonna move on to the next step.